action. It's Sydney Olympic versus Wollongong Wolves. Eric Shubihana here on the mic high in the grandstand here at Belmore Sports Ground and uh, really looking forward to a game between two teams packed with talent all over the park. So firstly for the hosts, Sydney Olympic, they're looking to build on something after a very impressive victory last time out. They won 2-0 away at a Manly United, while for the Travelling Wolves, they're looking to bounce back after being the latest team to be derailed by the Andrew Christensen revolution at Western Sydney Wanderers. It was the top of the table clash last week down on the south coast, but it was the Wanderers defeating Wollongong Wolves by two goals to nil on that occasion. So if you're less familiar with these two teams, it's traditional colours for both. The blue jerseys with the white pinstripes for Sydney Olympic and the predominantly red kit for Wollongong Wolves. And as we do the last of the pre-match formalities involving the two captains, Let's take you through the two starting lineups. Firstly, for Sydney Olympic in goal, number one, Noah James. We're expecting a back four from left to right. Number 23, Jackson Bandiera. Number four, George Timotheu. Number two, Peter Politis. And number 15, William Much. Two central midfielders, number eight, Sam McElhatton. Number 29, George Antonis. A band of three, that makes sense. Band of three attacking midfielders, number 17, Abraham Majok on the left. Number 14, Michael Barkas on the right. And number 10, Darcy Burgess in that central attacking midfield playmaker role. And up front, as always for Olympic over the last few years, number 99, the captain, Roy O'Donovan. While for Wollongong Wolves, they've made two changes from that game against the Wanderers last weekend. So in goal, number 20, Vedran Janjetovic. Uh, they're back four from left to right. Number four, Dylan Ryan. Num number five, Vanry Kanaizumi. Number three coming into the side is Darcy Madden. And number eight, Andre Takami. Uh, four across the midfield from left to right. That would be number seven, Takumi Ofuka. Number 88, Christopher McStay. Number six, Samuel Riak. And number 10, also coming into the side, Yagub Mustafa. And the two up front of a ver very familiar strike partnership for Wollongong Wolves fans. Number nine, Jake True. And the captain, number 24, Lachlan Scott. Brief shout out to the match officials. So with the whistle today in the center is Adrian Art, the assistant nearest to us, Amir Hussain Hasnani. The assistant on the hillside of Belmore Sports Ground is Shabo Geha, and today's fourth official is Mitchell Renton. Oh, just about ready to get underway, and doesn't Belmore Sports Ground look gorgeous as Adrian Arndt blows the whistle? Away we go, round eight, NPL men's New South Wales action on this, the long weekend. And by the way, a happy Easter for those of you that observe Easter at this time of year. Although, of course, for quite a few people in fact i suggest a lot of people here today their easter is on may the 5th but that's a story we'll get to on that weekend as it's cleared into the boards on the far side of the ground ah, actually a very lovely kit contrast it's especially with the sunlight it's really making the olympics blue kit and the wolves red kit pop so i uh, hope you're enjoying the visual spectacle here uh, for the saturday on uh, this long weekend as Riak involved in an early physical battle. You suspect the first of many he'll face and an attempt to diagonal towards a man new into the side uh, for this game. That's number 10, Yakub Mustafa. So Takami looks for the longer one and doesn't quite get the distance. He was looking for his captain, Lachlan Scott. So Majok actually couldn't play it down the line. He was blocked off by Mustafa. So Takami might get a second chance at the long throw. By the way, there is uh, one other NPL men's game, NPL men's New South Wales game in progress as we speak. It's at Seymour Shaw, and I think the last I checked, Arpia were leading Sutherland Sharks by a goal to nil down there. But I'll try and keep you updated with the other game that's happening as there's the cross coming in and uh, swing away from the goal. Noah James didn't, well, he wouldn't have been able to reach it anyway, but didn't seem too bothered. And yeah, that cross, I think from Takami it was, sailing over everyone. For Sydney Olympic, uh, uh, they'll be very grateful for that win on the Northern Beaches last time out. And now up to 10th in the league, but certainly hoping to climb high and challenge for finals places. The 16th final series, it's back for this year. As there's the run for McStay. Decent cross as well. And it's going to be a 50-50 here, which Dylan Ryan wins. Now Ofuka, uh, crowded out by blue jerseys. Ryan crosses. And it's away by Bandiera. By the way, Olympic, as you'd expect, unchanged. 
after ending their three-game losing streak with victory uh, last weekend. They're looking to build cohesion, our Sydney Olympic, and make some kind of run towards the upper echelon of the table. Now, Afuka. He was blocked off, and William Much prevents the danger, but at the expense of a corner. So the visitors will get the first corner kick of this afternoon's game. Actually, I like the way this uh, particular fixture has been timed. Because if you are inclined to watch a game after this one, well, you can have your pick of three 7 p.m. kickoffs, and I'll run you through those uh, when I get a chance. But firstly, it's this Wolves corner. Everyone back for Sydney Olympic. Aimed at the near post and, well, it was off Roy O'Donovan who, we know how he has the eye for goal here, but from the perspective of an Olympic fan, that was a little bit too close to an own goal. And the second corner kick coming up. Uh, lots of plays at the edge of the box and Olympic have a lot, oh sorry, Wolves have a lot of height, particularly with Samuel Riak, but Banri Kanaizumi, you suspect the main target from these set pieces, he's developed a reputation for being a threat from exactly this kind of situation. Here's McStay delivering, it's up over everyone, then back into the middle, and there's a real scramble on the edge of the six-yard box, to the edge of the box, and there's the shot from Kanaizumi, but no threat this time, it's very high and very wide, so from an Olympic perspective, danger over. Meantime, a Wollong, Wollongong Wolves, as I said, two changes made for this fixture with uh, Darcy Madden and Yagub Mustafa coming into the side. Uh, never quite sure when there's changes, how they're going to line up, but... Actually, might have to... Make some apologies and a couple of changes. I, I reckon we've had a little bit of an error with our lineup and dribble, but I'll try and fix that for a moment. It does look like it was actually the only the one change made uh, by the Wolves because I can see for the Wolves number two, Harrison Busnell in central defense alongside Banri Kanaizumi. So apologies for that. That must mean Darcy Madden is on the bench. Looks like everything else is, as I said it was at the top of the broadcast. Nice ball out to Bandiera. Now uh, the Wolves double up on Bandiera. Madrox trying to help him out. Of course, those two also former teammates at the Western Sydney Wanderers Academy. And that's seen out very nicely by Takami. He'll have a throw in right by his own corner flag. So Takami going for distance with the throw. Now Mustafa, nice flick over the head and it might open up here. That's an equally nice ball from Scott towards Afuka, who's well cuts inside William Much and oh, tried to thread it through. True had made a nice run. He might get to True still, and there's all kinds of appeals, I think, from both teams. True still going as the header from Politis. Corner kick to Wollongong. And they're third in about the opening six minutes of play. Yeah, as, uh, as I was saying, for the Wolves, yep. they did lose last time out, but still looking very good after seven rounds in fifth position. And, of course, not too much of a gap between them and the league leaders, Western Sydney Wanderers. McStay with the in-swinger. Again, aims near post. And O'Donovan, no scares this time. He sends that well away from danger. Ryan, long throw, nice flick from Scott. And then there's the shot, and it's a great save from James. So it will be a corner kick, but it was dipping, definitely going in. And it needed a strong right hand from Noah James. Because that was very nice technique on the shot from Afuka. It's very easy to just um, spray them anywhere when it's coming, when it's at that kind of fight to spray it anywhere except the goal. But the technique was nice, and it required an equally nice save from James. Stay to deliver. Again, he goes to the far side. And 
and it's blocked off. Potential counter-attacking opportunity for Olympic if they're quick enough, although the red jerseys have gotten back in good numbers. There's the move from Vakis towards Majok. And then, was that Takami? Yes, it was. Preventing Majok from running straight towards his goalkeeper. I think that's going to be now a long throw opportunity uh, for Sydney Olympic. And of course, thank, thanks for joining us here via the live tab on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. Actually, no, my apologies. That's going to be Olympic's first corner. Uh, these two teams evenly matched when they've met in recent times. We sure hope you stay till the end because there's usually some late drama between Olympic and Wolves. In swinger, and it's a decent one, but a nice header right to the edge of the box. Now, Vakis shoots, and it's over. That corner kick. That was Mackle Hatton. Aimed it right under, uh, right towards the shadow of the goalpost. And Janjanovic getting just what he wants from his defenders. A very strong header to help him out. So I might run you through the two sets of substitutes. Firstly for Olympic, Chris Parsons is the backup keeper. The others are Ziggy Gordon, Oliver Pufflet, Adam Parkhouse, Tenkual, and Ajani DePizio. And if we look at who's on the Wolves bench, well, as I said earlier, Darcy Madden must be on it because Harrison Busnell is out there. But, but the other bench options, Oliver Yates, Dax Kelly, Alex Mashavecchio, Damon Gray, and Thomas Dunn. Now, nice burst of speed, I think. That was going towards O'Donovan, but red jerseys in the way here. Nice positive start from both teams. And now Lachlan Scott has options either side. So he goes towards Mustafa, who's one on one with Bandiera. This will be a great battle between Bandiera and Mustafa for the whole, whole game, you think? McStay, away from a tackle, has a shot and a touch. So that is, well, they're racking up the corners. Five corners already. Even at this early stage of the game now for Wollongong Wolves. And whatever Wollongong Wolves worked on in terms of set pieces during the week, they're certainly trying to put it into fruition right now when it matters most. Who does McStay aim for? There's another good one and a very nice punch from Noah James with his back into the middle by Busnell. And the flick on from Kanaizumi. Mustafa hits his own teammate. I think that hit Kanaizumi. Now Majok trying to take things the other way. Now Riak, I think he's shepherding. Yeah, very nice shepherd. A shepherd that any central defender would be proud of there. Riak didn't really assess his options and decided to... The best thing to do was to settle for the throw-in. Wolves work the passing triangle on the grandstand side. Now, True will keep this in play. Bandera's got a different defensive challenge now, and True he does well blocking the cross. Now, there's True here. Recovering the ball. Wolves will try again. Uh, so looking at the Wolves' form, uh, they did start with an opening day defeat, but then four wins and a draw from the next five matches has created the strong league position they're in now. And as there's Takami linking with Mustafa, I think almost slipped on the grass there. So Olympic really being boxed in. Bandiera looking for an option, and he found it. I think we, that was McElhatton. And now Darcy Burgess wins the free kick. Very nice play from Darcy Burgess. Had almost, almost no room to work with. And although he didn't quite beat his marker, he's won the free kick, and that allows Olympic to step up. But yes, uh, back to my earlier point. It's usually close. <coughs> When Olympic and Wolves play really close, in fact, draws in each of the of the last four meetings between these two teams. And a couple of two-all draws last season, then a one-all draw and a three-all draw in the 2022 campaign. So, a good chance if history is any guide of seeing goals as well. And further to that, actually, there's been a goal after the 80th minute in each of the last five games between these two. So. I sure, certainly hope you stay until the end because I've got a good feeling that uh, 
a reaction from start to finish in this one. McStay looking for a Fuka, and the positioning was spot on from William Much. Now, Majox found himself uh, switched wings. Now on the right-hand side of Olympics attack, cross is blocked. Mustafa has a defensive header, doesn't get much distance on it. it goes sideways, if anything. And Mackel Hatton, always a fierce competitor, and he's won a free kick. Got his body in the way, and in fact, we will have a stoppage. Wolves player needs treatment on the far side. Yes, the physio's already on the field. It's Chris McStay, and he's been so crucial to how things operate in the Wolves central midfield ever since uh, he joined uh, the South Coast side. Provided, provides so much energy in midfield. Covers a lot of ground. Tracks back to help protect the defenders. Also gets forward in attack. You'll see him on the left flank. See him on the right flank as necessary. So Wolves certainly can't afford to lose him. We, it doesn't look to be too serious. I think we'll see him back before too long. And of course, with mixed day, that's also uh, what we saw from him uh, with his previous clubs, Sutherland Sharks and Rockdale Illenden. So, of course, McStay will have to be off the field. So Wolves now a player light when defending this set piece. And everyone back for the visitors. Now, it does look like it'll be uh, Mackel Hatton. Actually, no. It's going to be Bandera from range. Took a touch off the wall. Burgess needs to keep it in play. And that spin... Off the grass didn't favor him. So a goal kick. And now, yep, McStay looks like he's back on the field. So Wolves see at that very brief period with 10 players on the park. And Yedovic sending it towards halfway. It was uh, between Ryan and Riak. I'm not sure either of them got ahead on it. Now a Wolves throwing, and yep, there he is. There's Chris McStay. In this case for all's well, that ends well. And it's actually some very interesting stuff going on in the other game as we speak. I'll, I'll take you through that when we got a moment. As Takami looking for options. Jake True is uh, blocked off by Timotheu, but he's done enough to disrupt Timotheu there. And it's a throw-in coming up. By the way, well, the goals have been flying in, at least at one end at Seymour Shore. There's approaching half time there. It's Sutherland Sharks nil. RPL like up four. Well, defensive header there and helped on by Burgess. Now O'Donovan back just to try and secure the ball for the hosts. Now, of course, if O'Donovan went back, there was no one forward, but Mackel Hatton's going to make Kanazumi work for it. And now O'Donovan up there. So, Wolves trying the other side. And Ofuka resumes the battle with much. And it's another corner. Oh, this is six corners already. But no goals as yet for either side here. Well, Belmore Sports Ground, round eight, MPL men's New South Wales action. The score is currently Sydney Olympic nil, Wollongong Wolves nil. So there's the delivery, and good punch again from James towards Mustafa. He shoots, and it's over. <coughs> and Noah James, of course, it's becoming a tactic more and more in football these days for the corners to just crowd the six-yard box, put the keeper under as much pressure as possible, and then swing it in towards him. But uh, the two times he's needed to do it, Noah James has come up with a couple of very good punches to clear the danger. Timotheu. Bandier has already gotten high wide nearest to us. Instead, he goes to Majok. Get ri gets rid of a defender. Now O'Donovan has a couple of plays with him. Decides to go himself, and there's McStay with the tackle. Now Takami. He shepherded. Despite O'Donovan's protestations, that's going to be a goal kick. It 
it's Politis with the defensive head off. Now Burgess, he's got the runner in behind, Yanyanovic off his line and good confidence. Defenders love to see when the keeper's proactive. And uh, now Yanyanovic assessing his options. run by Burgess he's for a moment found himself between defenders breaks for Vakas a goal scorer last time out and to the byline he goes he'll keep it in and then neat dink but straight into veteran Janjedovic's gloves Ryan looking for Mustafa. He switched sides for the time being. That's a nice header. I think it was Politis. And they're looking for Majoku's fast, but not that fast. And an easy one for Janjedovic. By the way, after this game concludes, we do hope you stick around for more NPL men's New South Wales action on uh, this long weekend. There's three NPL men's games Kicking off at 7 p.m. or thereabouts. Firstly, I'm looking forward to this one. It's um, Hills United versus Manly United down at Alandon Stadium, and that will be called by the People's Champion, Nicholas Kutniak. In fact, it's the dream team there. Nicholas Kutniak on the commentary, and Justin Davies will be writing the report for Football New South Wales. As the Olympic fans want a free kick, but instead Majok will go on, and now O'Donovan trying to find Majok who Help the Irishman. But the Wolves getting numbers back just in time. And also at 7 p.m., it's uh, Western Sydney Wanderers, led by super coach Andrew Christensen. They host uh, St. George FC. And uh, that match report will be done by uh, Liam O'Sullivan. And then also at 7 p.m., at the Palace Marconi Stadium, it's Marconi Stallions versus Central Coast Mariners. Commentary done. Uh, there by the Serbian Martin Tyler, Nikola Posta. As Wolves, suddenly it's open right up here. Here and Fuka will get into the box. He might go all the way. Here's a Fuka, and he's scored for Wollongong Wolves. The counterattack was swift, and it was decisive, and it was lethal to Kumi Fuka with his sixth goal of the season. And just like that, it found some very nice space, some clever movement from Afuka to get in behind the defense. And they weren't fast enough to catch up to him. Noah James could do nothing about that strike. Afuka was devastating with the left boot. Sydney Olympic nil, Wollongong Wolves won. That's hard work out there. And as a measure of just how hard it is, uh, it's going to be a drinks break, something we might associate more with the A-League competitions, but especially in this early part of NPL well, Men's well, New well, South well, Wales, well, it's well, definitely well, necessary. So while the players take a well-earned break, I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll like being in the, the shade as well. But yes, to complete the rounds action, well, so to speak, um, two NPL men's New South Wales games tomorrow, both kicking off at 3 p.m. Firstly, it's the team some people call the pride of Western Sydney, Blacktown City. They host Sydney United 58 and commentary there done by the man they call Pretty Boy, Alexander Molchanov. Also 3 p.m. tomorrow, it's Rockdale Inlandon versus Northwest Sydney Spirit called by Nicola Posder. Now... One game schedule for this round has been postponed to Wednesday, the 1st of May. That's Sydney FC Academy versus St. George City. But so, of course, that along with all the other games in NPL men's New South Wales for this round will be shown on 
the Football News South Wales YouTube page. So that's it. In case you're wondering why there are only seven games on the page for this round, that's why. The eighth one uh, will be played on the 1st of May. And now back under the way after the teams have had a drink. Of course, any opportunity the coaches have to impart some quick instructions to the team, whether winning or otherwise, I'm sure they'll take it. So uh, let's see if any adjustments are made. Oh dear, what a what a great strike that was from Afuka. Still had a lot to do when he got the ball, but he did it well. And after what seven and a quarter games to have six goals already, and from a wide player as well, it's an excellent return. Nice flick from Mustafa. Now True takes it backwards and then looks to switch it to today's goal scorer. Uh, Dylan Ryan up from left back to support. And Zavakis back defending. Uh, wins the throw in as well, so good defending there from Michael Vakis. Now Busnell is the header, but only to Majok, who's a one-on-one -on -one with Takami. Majok, oh, that's a lovely tackle from Takami on the edge of the box. And he's not satisfied with that. He wants to try and start an attack. McStay is curling it. He does curl it around Timotheu, but that's pretty straightforward for Noah James. And then that will be a free kick to the home side. Now, it was, I think, Kanaizumi did not cut that out, but it's straight to Yanjanovic, so uh, no issues there for Wollongong. Now, that will, Majok inadvertently flicked it on towards Jay True. Now, takes it back to about 10 yards outside the box. McStay goes from range. Uh, I'm pretty sure that took a touch. Corner kick coming up. And oh, sorry, Wolves seventh corner by my very unofficial tally. Stay. You can see he takes it. You can see Lachlan Scott being the nuisance in front of Noah James, the keeper. And well, Olympic don't clear at the first attempt. And oh, almost a little bit of a mix up between Wolves players. But they still have it to Wollongong. And it's Afuka on the edge of the box. And a little chip. And Timothy then Burgess with defensive headers. Now, space for Majok. Vakas making the run in behind. So is O'Donovan. And Majok opted not to pass to either. Went for the more uh, possession-based pass to McElhatton. And I think that's Darcy Burgess on the far side. It is. Nice tackle from Afuka. So the Wolves goal scorer also showing he can defend. Vakas. They, they double up on him. He's found O'Donovan anyway. And the shot, well, I think charged down by Busnell took all the sting out of it. Simple save. And distributed quickly to Mustafa, but... Bandera read the intentions. It's right out of the fullback's textbook of defending, if such a text exists. <coughs> now, Scott will find True, who's pulled out wide. Mustafa and Scott running through the middle. Afuka joining them. And he finds Mustafa. And, oh, oh, well, if he had left that... Might have made his way to Lachlan Scott in space. We know how Lachlan Scott, how good Lachlan Scott is usually. Now, back the other way. Majok, low cross. Busnell, nice defending. Takami under pressure, but spins away from Majok and finds safety. 
the drinks break has had the intended effect. The tempo stayed high throughout the, what, 27 and a half minutes we've had so far. More defending, that's sent. Oh. Uh, it rebounds off the stand, so that ball kid will get, get a little bit of a run out on the field and pass the ball to Jackson Bandiera for the throw in. Bounces it off Majok. Bandera. He crosses. He got the cross in. It will be a corner kick. So McElhatton to deliver. The delivery was a, a very, it ended up being quite low and McStay thumped it away. Now, Olympic need to settle it as Wolves are pressing high. In fact, it's quick enough feet to win a free kick. Politis, great diagonal pass to Bandiera. And then Burgess had ghosted into the middle. Uh, it was headed away. Now it's back with Timotheu. Michael Hatton is up against McStay and he's won the free kick. Nice work and uh, another set piece opportunity coming up. Bandiera to deliver. He'll want to swing this in towards the keeper. And lunging there was Kanaizumi. Michael Haddon heading it into the middle and a oh, half clearance. So there's a shot. And it was Politis, the center back, who stayed up for the set piece. And Jan Yedovic, positioned well, falls on the ball. Uh, past the half hour mark. Sorry, past the half hour mark here at Belmore Sports Grounds. Eric Subihano with the commentary for today's NPL men's New South Wales game. Thanks for joining us here. The score is currently Sydney Olympic nil, Wollongong Wolves one because of a goal from this man here, Takumi Ofuka, number seven for Wollongong. Now, Mustafa has something to chase, keeps it in. What are his crossing options? He delivers, there's Lachlan Scott, just past his forehead. And Lachlan Scott, a man who absolutely loves scoring against Sydney Olympic. Eight goals in eight appearances for Wollongong Wolves when they when they have played Sydney Olympic. He certainly is a danger man, Lachlan Scott. Has has the knack of being in the right place at the right time when the ball's in the penalty area. <coughs> Now, Michael Hatton have delayed the early through ball. Now he wants to play it forward, and it breaks for Majok. Here's Majok, and there's Takami lunging in once again. So Mustafa has React overlapping, instead is more direct. And now, it's Bandera. Bandera again. His cross blocked by Riak. Now Olympic don't get that call, and Riak runs away. Three plays in front of him. Jake True. Jake Jake True up against two defenders, but cutting inside anyway. Michael Hatton takes the sting out of the shot, and Timotheu has had enough of that and sends it as far away as he can. Yeah. 
and he's trying the left side. Next day, and now Dylan Ryan, but nothing doing in that part of the field. Back to the center backs they go. Now, did Scott time his run? No, is the answer. Flags up from Amir Hossein Hosnani on the near side. Battle there was she it was Dylan Ryan and Majok. Ryan ending up kind of in the center back position. He followed Majok's run and does enough so that Yanyadovich can pick up the ball. Now back the other way and Timotheu has to head for safety. Day. Zings it towards Ryan, and Ryan put too much mustard on that pass. So Fuka was never going to catch up to it. So I think I said at the top of the broadcast, you had. Vakas would be on the left of the Olympic attack and Majok on the right. So they, they've swapped. Of course, winger swapping quite common in football. And Olympic now chasing the game, trying to do something different. That's an uncharacteristic lo loose pass from Darcy Burgess there. I think we'll see him do that again for a while. Now, they do... What do Olympic do? Do they try and trap Wolves in this corner of the field? Well, no trapping a long throw like that, and it breaks for Mustafa. A good turn of speed. He's got a little bit of room and a runner in front of him, but there's a great tackle from Timotheu. Then, ooh, <laughs> quick reactions from McStay to not get hit in the face with the ball. Still with the Wolves. Lock on Scott, backing into Bandiera. And now Riak. That's the nice dummy from McStay. Reckon he got a shout from Afuka. Swings it in. And now another 50-50 coming up. And Riak. Well, what's the call here? Well, you know, two different signals here. And in the end, Adrian Arndt backing his assistant, Amir Hossein Hosnani. And Riak's alertness, shall we say, in that 50-50 has ended up with... Uh, attacking throw an opportunity. Yeah, that, oh, that might be swinging away. Yeah, so you have the hand up in apology from Takami. It was the right idea because Truett made a nice run. Of course, he can't be offside from a throw in, but. Ball just getting away from Wolves that time. Nice header from Ryan. Finding McStay. Now Afuka. Now, decent ball, and Scott turns away. And then there's the shot. Took a deflection. So, the eighth corner for the Wolves in the, the first half. Now, 
actually off frame, Vev Janjedovic trotting up to the center circle just to have a quick chat with Andre Takami, their sole Wolves player back on the halfway line. Everyone else either in or around the penalty area. Next day's delivery and a couple of Wolves plays in there and better safe than sorry if you're Sam McElhatton. Heads it out and another corner kick coming up. So again, aiming towards the far side. McStay seems to like to do it when it's an outswinger. And chance for Olympic to break, but McStay quick enough to at least slow it down. In fact, yeah, he's ke kept the ball for his team. And now Mustafa, well, he'll settle for the throw. Conservation there on the sidelines. Adrian Art signals thrown to Olympic, so yeah, that was good on um, the shielding of the ball from Majok. Here's Majok again. Now Lachlan Scott is away briefly from McElhatton. Mustafa tried the switch. There's the header from Much. Now Dylan Ryan for Wolves, and he's found a Fuka. So that's Fakis back defending. Afuka gets away from him. And now that's brilliant from Afuka. He shoots and scores. What a wonderful goal. Takumi Afuka with half time approaching has weaved more than a bit of magic. <coughs> it's Sydney Olympic nil, Wollongong Wolves 2. And the defenders didn't know which way Afuka was going. He went one way, he went the other. And then once he made the space, Takumi Afuka has made Noah James an absolute bystander here. What a goal. And honestly, that should be a contender for goal of the year. As it was absolutely magnificent from the Wolves number seven, who now has seven for the season. That touch it was actually much overlapping from right back, chasing it and safety first from Busnels, slamming the ball onto the hill. So some ball kids about to go on a bit of an adventure, I suspect. Actually, no, thanks to that kind spectator who's going to retrieve the loose ball for us. But long throw and the header from Ryan. The long throw, well, it's almost more up than forward there. And Scott's back to help defend. And it looks like Vakis and his speed wins a corner kick. the flying defensive header was that Ryan again it was back into the mixer McStay heading it away now Burgess on the left foot and it went past Jan Yedovic's outstretched arm but also past the post
Darcy Burgess forced sideways by Kanazumi. And now the ball, Majok, he should keep it in play. Flag stays down despite Takami's appeals. Cut it back to McElhatton. Now Burgess, that's blocked. In fact, he's actually Burgess ruled to have fouled the player there. That was Kanazumi. You see that, I mean, see that from Kanazumi there. The things that are really hard to track with stats. He's actually, he slowed down the attack by forcing Burgess to go sideways. And then from near the halfway line, he managed to recover quickly enough. So he was in Burgess's way right in the box. And that's why he won that free kick. And Banri Kanazumi has been a great signing uh, since he's joined Wollongong Wolves providing uh, so much stability and security at the back is uh, Banri Kanaizumi. Also, yeah, it's a fair share of goals from set pieces. He's already got two this season. And if Wolves keep winning corners at this rate throughout the whole of the game and into the second half, surely Kanaizumi will get his head on one at some point. Jake Trues run out to the left-hand side. Goes backwards. Dylan Ryan. And there's McStay making a late run into the middle. Didn't get to him. Majok. Now, Majok, I, think, I don't know if he got some shouts, but whether he did or didn't, it was Mustafa stealing possession back for the Wolves. Then that will break for Majok. And Majok looking for support. He finds it with Darcy Burgess. And then there's Lachlan Scott of all people. And the captain leading by example. And the striker... Uh, doing his bit in a defensive sense. Timothy, his ball swept up by Kanazumi. Now, Kanazumi threading it right through multiple players looking for Scott. And Scott, there's Kanazumi again towards React, but George Antonis is in the way. And to first half stoppage time, and there's the signal from the fourth official, Mitchell Renton. A minimum of three minutes time added on before we end this first half. And then if it's trying the other side, that should be Bandieras, but it's a loose touch. Takami, now Mustafa for Wolves. And now Mustafa's found some space to cut inside. And he, he needs an option. And Antonis, despite his claims that he got the ball, Adrian Art says otherwise. And we're going to see the first slice of cheese. And that goes to George Antonis. be almost the last opportunity to see a goal in this first half roughly halfway through the three minutes of time added on or thereabouts uh, interesting position for a free kick this probably too long for a shot it would have to be an incredible shot to beat the keeper from there although there is four in the wall set by Noah James so McStay chips it in and there's a header over true but it was Dylan Ryan into the middle and Ryan again Olympic having trouble clearing that. They eventually get the ball over the sideline. Mustafa uh, tried the Marseille roulette. Indeed, he couldn't get past those two players. Uh, O'Donovan. And Burgess. It, well, I don't think Bacchus was going to get to that anyway, but in any case, Dylan Ryan had the run covered.
Wolves. I mean, they'd be delighted to have a 2-0 lead at halftime. And that's what they'll be taking into the dressing sheds. Halftime here at Belmore Sports Ground. And it has been the Takumi Ofuko show. show. The Wolves number seven is the reason that Wolves are in a great position at the break. Ofuko scored his first goal on 21 minutes. It was basically a one-man counter-attack. Found some space on the halfway line. Ran it all the way into the box and slammed it past Noah James. And his second goal in the 41st minute. I think a contender for goal of the year. A real zigzag run past multiple defenders before his left boot was deadly once again. And that's how we got to the halftime score of Sydney Olympic nil, Wollongong Wolves 2. This is Eric Subihano with the commentary for the Football New South Wales YouTube page. We'll take a short break, about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll be back for the second half.
Welcome back to the second half of this Football New South Wales broadcast. Thanks for joining us on YouTube. It's a case of so far so good for the away side. Wollongong Wolves are leading by two goals to nil over Sydney Olympic. Second half ready to get underway. They're looking at the shirt numbers, Olympic have made at least two subs at half time. So on is number five, Ziggy Gordon, and number 11, Adam Parkhouse. And I think I'll have to scan the shirt numbers to see uh, which Olympic players have made way. But anyway, there's the whistle from Adrian Arndt. Away we go for the second period of this game. And there's Noah James with the very clear shout, rolling it to the new, newly introduced defender, Ziggy Gordon. So, it does look like Siggy Gordon, number five, has replaced Peter Politis in central defense. So he is alongside George Timofeu, while Adam Parkhouse is on the left-hand side of the Olympic attack. And he has replaced Abraham Majok, Adam Parkhouse, wearing number 11. There's a bit of space for Parkhouse here. And he crosses to the far post. And Michael Vakas has pulled a goal back immediately in the first minute of the second half. And he gestures to the crowd. That's exactly what the hosts need to fire themselves up. Michael Vakas once more from the Olympic faithful here in attendance at Belmore. And what a cross. What an introduction for Adam Parkhouse. Vakas scoring just like he did last weekend against Manly United. And it is certainly game on here. And Adam Parkhouse, a player who uh, has been known in this competition for many years, both with Sydney Olympic and Manly United, his previous club. He also has A-League experience with Wellington Phoenix. I was about to talk him up, but I didn't need to. You saw it for yourself how Olympics number 11 can change a game. And James shouting away, Ziggy Gordon obliges. And across absolute from Parkhouse, absolute nightmare uh, for defenders and keepers. He's absolutely zinged it along the ground between the defenders and the keeper. None of them could do anything about it. Uh, Vakis certainly could. He stuck it in the back of the net. the cross from the left side again that was always oh, going to be awkward for Donovan he did his best he actually did very well to even get it that close to the goal yes but sorry I do, I'm trying to avoid talking while the PA is on because that's quite a loud PA and is obviously they don't actually think you'd be able to hear me anyway but yeah so I was saying yeah with that cross from O'Donovan I mean it was behind him he really had to twist the neck muscles and actually he did well to even get something to land on the roof of the net but Jan Yedovic had it covered in any case State delivering this set piece and oh well that was an interesting one an improvised clearance because almost ended up behind him using more of the side of his boot to get send it away now McStay left foot across this time and I think you could hear the a little bit of a yell of disappointment couldn't wrap his boot around it that time Chris McStay by the way score update from the other game in progress and uh yes and closing stages at Seymour Shore. Well, hold that thought as Adam Parkhouse is away down the left-hand side again. Cuts it back. Oh, Donovan, bit of a loose touch. It gave Kanazumi a chance. And Takami help 
Helps that Kanazumi there, but there you go, just just like that. Olympic have flown out of the blocks for this second half. And definitely got more more than a little bit of momentum in this one as Ufuka plays it back to Riak. Mustafa. And Mustafa gets the shouts from McStay. Nice space occupied there and yeah, again. That's uncharacteristic from Chris McStay. Normally so measured with his passing. But yes, the score update uh, at Seymour Shaw, closing stages there, it is Sutherland Sharks nil, RPL Leichhardt 7. Uh, additional substitutions for the pick at half time. Number 11, Adam Parker came on and he replaced number 17, Abraham Majok. Dylan Ryan and uh, William Much uh, read that pass. He was already almost already moving to block it before um, Ryan had actually played the ball. And then there's a good tackle from Kanaizumi. And Ryan, a bit of fortune there. He was lunging just to keep it in play. He's ended up winning the throw in because of that slight miscontrol from Vakis. But uh, Vakis will still be feeling good after he scored the goal to halve the deficit. Now, scoreboard. A uh, much more palatable sight for the home fans. Now Mustafa from way out sends was swerving and dipping, but not enough to trouble Melba James. So we've seen two Olympic subs, so probably worth reminding you of <coughs> the remaining options left for them. Uh, they can choose from Oliver Pufflet. Tenkual, Johnny DePizio, and Christopher Parsons. The Parsons being the backup keeper. Of course, subs made at halftime mean they've still got all three of their substitution windows remaining. Gordon has beaten true to the punch there, so to speak. Ufuka tried to keep it in play. Loses out to McElhatton. Now Burgess tried to thread the eye of a needle there. Not getting past Kanazumi, though. Now Ufuka fends off McElhatton. A big don't argue. Yes. Well, it opens up for McStay and it's straight at Noah James. Back to that friend from Afuka. Uh, sticking an arm out to hold off an opponent. The kind of thing you might see more often in rugby league, which, as you may be able to guess by the additional markings on this ground, also played very often at Belmore Sports Ground. Burgess spaced the turn. And now Dylan Ryan has been pinged for the three kick. And actually, the, I think the card's gone to react there. So perhaps um, Adrian aren't gesturing to something that happened in a different part of the field. So it's now one yellow card apiece. Samuel react into the book for the Wolves. <coughs> and just to complete my thought on substitutes, of course, Wolves have not made a sub, so uh, they can still choose from Harrison Busnell, Oliver Yates, Dax Kelly, Alex Mascio-Vecchio, Damon Gray, and Thomas Dunn. I'd expect the most likely player of those six to see is Mascio-Vecchio, a very quick attacking player, even if they still have the lead. He's a, a good player for counter-attacks, so might see him. Anyway, Bandiero with this long free kick and it swings wide. Janjetovic was worried enough to dive. And it curls just past that post. Nice, very nice effort from Jackson Bandiero there. Yes. Now. Yes. 
see some instructions going on. So it's a test of my ability to identify substitutes. And does that mean Johnny DePizio is the next Olympic player to enter the field? We'll see. Now that's given Parkas a job to do, but it, the ball does slow up just enough, and it's a decent ball headed away by Kanaizumi. <coughs> now, great touch off the chest, and Lachlan Scott brings Ofuka into the play. Just to complete my thought of Mashiaveko, yes, even if Wolves are still leading when he comes on, if he comes on, his speed will could expose any spaces that Olympic lead as they chase the game and look for an equalizer. Now, Timotheu stepping into midfield. And it's Darcy Burgess. There's some room here. Goes wide to Vakis. There's a header. And now, Timotheu, who stayed forward, he has a strike, but he gets the contact all wrong. Now, Olympic have to make sure uh, that they cover the central defender who's come forward. In fact, Wolves, well, actually, might open up for Ofuka here. And Ofuka has been fouled by Vakis. Ofuka just taking his time before getting up. And Noah James signaled that he would like two in the wall. So next day. As we saw all throughout the first half, we'll take this dead ball. And it goes, and it's a great ball as well. It's in. No, no, no. The flag's up. The flag's up. And that won't count. Shabo Geha assisted on the far side, had the flag up straight away. And it's a brief moment of joy for the Wolves fans. And to no goal. It's... Still remaining 2 1 to Wollongong Wolves over Sydney Olympic. Uh, so I do see a blue jersey with a number 19 in front of me. Johnny DePizio will be the next player to enter play for Olympic as it's switched over to Ofuka. He's 1 and 1. Olympic double up on him as you would expect after that wonderful individual effort he scored in the first half. Uh, he scored twice, of course, so. Olympic trying to get bodies in front of Ofuka at every opportunity. Now Burgess. Fuka trying to play the one-two with Scott. It breaks to Scott. Now he plays it wide to Mustafa. And Mustafa didn't like what was in front of him. Goes back to Dylan Ryan. He swings it in. And that Bandiera clears. Now Takami for the Wolves. Johnny DePizio waits patiently in the shadows. Literally <laughs> waits patiently to come on. Does look like Wolves have switched, have, have swapped the wide players at least for this phase of play. So Ofuka trying, trying to see what he can do on the right hand side of the Wolves attack. Mustafa's on the left. And of course, yeah, they've got the lead, so Wolves can be patient. Now, can I zoom me? There's, there's put too much heat on that one. That's an interesting bar pass, and Antonis has made the run. He's got support, tries a couple of step overs. George Antonis, and it's off Yanjevic. It's in, it's in. Sydney Olympic have come back from the dead. They've made it 2 2. As we approach the hour mark here, the Olympic fans laughed at George Antonis, got on the end of an excellent pass. He kept his composure when he was inside the box, found the space to get the shot away. 
Jan Jedovic could not, despite sticking a leg out, getting a, getting it some kind of a touch on it. He could not keep it out. And of course, I've given it to Antonis. We will see. Actually, no. That'll be Darcy Burgess's goal. My apologies. I've just had a look at the stream. It's going to be. There we go. So, well, good and bad for me. There's my prediction. Alex Mashevecchio onto the field. So I've got one thing right, but as the grand announcer said, and I have just had a look at the stream. Yep, Darcy Burgess definitely got to that before it crossed the line. So it is Burgess's goal. The most important thing is that it's a home team comeback. It's now Sydney Olympic 2, Wollongong Wolves 2. Actually, I should have. Yep, it's Mashio Becker replacing Lachlan Scott, so he will not add to his excellent goal record against Sydney Olympic. I also think Gianni DiPizio came on as well. So, no, that's a sub I've got to clarify. As McStay plays the set piece, corner kick, double figure corners for Wollongong. It relates to as it relates to that Olympic sub. I think I'll, we'll have to wait for free play and see how they line up before I see who Johnny DePizio has replaced. And of course, assuming that he got onto the field. Now Olympic definitely have something to hold on to. All hands on deck to defend the corner kick. It's over Busnell. Afuka gathers it on the other side. And Afuka. No, oh, no, there will be a free kick. Another set piece. And the header from Gordon. So Riak will recover. Back into the mixer it goes. Busnell's in there. Now Mustafa. Good technique to keep it low. It is about a yard or so wide of the far post. Or oh, sorry, of the keeper's right hand post. As a as a train goes past heading west. Ah, of course. This venue, Belmore Sports Ground, as that goes back to Noah James. And really one of the great venues in the city if you are a football fan, train spotter, and a plane spotter, because you can see planes flying overhead in the distance. You can see all three of those things. Not quite Fraser Park in that sense, but still very nice. Header from Kanaizumi. See, Parkhouse causing more havoc on the left hand side. O'Donovan. Cross is blocked. <coughs> Now, that, that breaks to O'Donovan and he almost threaded it through to Vakis. Here's Darcy Burgess. And that cross took the sting out of that lunge was uh, very well timed from a Wolves perspective. Now, well, McStay's got a chase on here and uh, George Antonis ruled to have fouled. Uh, McStay actually, I think about it, yeah. No, now DePizio's coming on. My, my apologies. Yeah, I, was, I was wondering why I couldn't see who he'd replace. The answer is he hadn't come on yet. There you go. Simple answer. Now it's going to be Michael Vakis and Darcy Burgess making way. So the two goal scorers, actually. Good shift for them, especially in the second half. Uh, Vakis and Burgess off. Number 19, Johnny DePizio on. And number 9, Oliver Pufflet. Now, Mr. 
half intercepts, but yes, it's Oliver Puffelet and Johnny DePizio on. I'll see, looks does look like they have made some kind of a reshuffle Olympic. But in the meantime, Parkhouse trying like almost like a little sandwich there to drop it in behind the defense. Ryan puts it up in the air. Pufflet immediately making a nuisance of himself. Now Antonis, Pufflet, step over and then on the left foot. Well, that, that wasn't going to trouble the keeper anyway and it didn't even get there. Let's see, so DePizio is now kind of the more deeper line midfielders for Olympic alongside Michael Hatton, which means George Antonis now playing further forward, the furthest of that central midfield trio. Oliver Pufflet is now wide on the right for Olympic. <clears throat> so tracking that does does tend to be a lot easier when the subs leave in the technical area although of course the directive is for them to leave via the nearest touchline but it's kind of worked out for us in this instance in terms of figuring that out Ziggy Gord, I think he's just going to watch that go out of play and uh, no real challenge from uh, Jay True. Uh, there you go. If this scoreline stays as it is, of course, plenty of football still to be played. It would be the third consecutive two-all draw between these two sides. Uh, it goes down the line. Here's Mashia Becker. It's his first real involvement in the game. And he crosses it. True had made a nice run to the near post. He'd escaped the defenders. That, that one was aimed at the far post. And it will end up being an Olympic throw in. <clears throat> so, customary, shall we say, stealing of a few yards now. Can Izumi and O'Donovan hit the grass? Decision goes the way of the home side. O'Donovan, such an experienced campaigner. He's used his body so well in a tricky situation. Uh, it's going to be Olympic free kick after a little bit of admin from both Adrian Art and Mitchell Renton, the fourth official, I think. Amir Hussain Hasnani is coming across as well. Adrian Art just wanting to see what the other official, check what the other official saw. Now, O'Donovan's been signaled back. And the card's in his hand. So, well, I thought it was an Olympic free kick. I mean, it might still be an Olympic free kick, to be fair. But Roy O'Donovan into uh, Adrian Arndt's notebook. By the way, uh, Matt Seymour Shaw, full time there, and it's, it's uh, Southern Sharks nil, RPL Leichhardt 7, so a dream day for RPL Leichhardt, but for Sutherland Sharks, it's been an absolute nightmare. Would you believe it? Seven goals to nil. The Wolves are going to uh, bring on another, uh, I think the second substitute. So number 27, Damon Gray is going to enter the field. Is he replacing Mashio Vecchio? He just came on. Is it? A substitute being subbed, or Mashevek is sitting down. Didn't see an injury, but well, I mean, doesn't look like he's going to come back, so that's an unfortunate one for Mashevek who just come on. You don't often see that, the substitute being substituted. We hope Mashevek is okay. McStay from halfway into Noah James's gloves.
Now that's a nice ball and O'Donovan gets away from the defense. O'Donovan tries the chip and it's going right across the face of goal. And Pufflet didn't keep it in play. He gave it his best efforts, but it's just snuck over that goal line. Yeah, there's the movement from O'Donovan. In between defenders. So, so because Mashio Vecchio replaced Scott, yeah, and now Damon Gray is, and Damon Gray is alongside Jake True as centre forwards for the Wolves. Uh, stepping in there nicely, Banri Kanaizumi. Is going for Olympic. Michael Hatton turns. Can I zoom me again? Oh, that's lovely work from the central defender. A ball playing centre back. Love to see it. Gordon adamant that he is one of Rowan. He has not. Now Dylan Ryan, we've seen Andre Takami on the other side of the Wolves formation. Try some long throws. What does Dylan Ryan have? Uh, Wolves preparing for Ryan to go for distance. So let's see. Dylan Ryan about to do his best Megan Campbell impersonation. And that's a good throw as well towards Gray. And the shot from McStayer. Blue jerseys in the way. Now, well, Vendjetovic didn't feel like coming, but yeah, it's, it hopped up nicely for Busnell to head it back to him. There's Vendjetovic. Oh, nice accuracy. Uh, that kick out from Jan Yedovic right onto Dylan Ryan's forehead. That's a great first touch from Michael Hatton. <coughs> oh, there the well, that's the great ball from Timotheu. And now Chanson. Oh, Donovan would have had an open goal. Uh, gotten away from the defenders. It was Bandiera. Who couldn't get enough zip on the cross to beat Jan Yedovic. And there you go, it's the left side again. That's, yeah, that's where Olympic are threatening from on their left hand side. This time it was Bandiera who'd overlapped all the way from left back. And Timothy looking to play another pass towards Parkhouse. And Takami gets his head to it. Now yeah, the keeper will be the option here. Up for grabs into the final 20 minutes here. Now that now I've noticed there is was no drinks break, or at least no no, no drinks break by the referee in this second period. They clearly ruled it. It has cooled down, and I mean, I mean, we are sitting in the sand, but uh, that's consistent with my assessment of it. Didn't really think we needed a drinks break in the second half, as warm as it was in the first half. Dylan Ryan and lots of grass in front of him. So he aims his cross and delivers. Now it's awkward for Gray and Olympic survive. Now Pufflet. Oh, Pufflet gets yeah, had the shout, aiming his shouts as An Antonis. <coughs> One, two. There's Mustafa getting it back from McStay. Dylan Ryan forward once again. And he crosses, but that's the outside of the boot clearance from Timotheu. Now Parkhouse and oh, just the bounce did him there. So that, that's what gave Busnell a chance. And by the way, you may have seen players warming up yet. Yeah, it's a bit of a different arrangement here, at, for, at least for this particular match day. Normally under 20s is before first grade, but it's the other way around today. So the 20s game will kick off after uh, this one is finished. And that's for uh, the Fukas. 
Yeah, can't reel that in. Now, it's a long throw from March, and Antonis hasn't given up on it. Corner kick to Olympic. Now, there we go, the short corner here. Antonis clips it in, and, and Gordon, well, I mean, <laughs> don't know what the point of waving your arm when it was. <laughs> but uh, Damon Gray couldn't clear it and then slams it into Parkhouse, so it's a goal kick. But yeah, Olympic almost caught Wollongong Wolves out with a short corner. Uh, Antonis' little clip cross too high for Ziggy Gordon, who had made a nice run. Ofuka, a little bit of a quieter second half, although it'd be obviously be hard to match his first half where he scored twice. But Ofuka, still very capable of being the match winner. And we're getting to that stage. Will it be a draw? Will it be a moment of magic that settles it for one of the teams? Could be a mistake, of course, as well. But we hope it's a moment of magic. In the meantime, okay, so. <coughs> At number three, Darcy Madden. He's going to enter the field, so the player I mistakenly said was in the starting line. Well, we do get to see him for about a quarter of an hour or so. Let's see who's making way. It's Jake True, who I'm just seeing on the far side. Jake True's left the field. So, I mean, Darcy Madden, not the center forward, from my memory of watching him play for Wolves in previous years. So they'll change things up again. Madden's first job to take the throw in. Next day. He crosses. And will give much something to think about, so he just tries to get it as wide as possible. Ofuka. Back to Ryan. Great cross. Lovely curl on it. And it breaks. It breaks there. It's a goal. It's a goal. Andre Takami, who popped up in the right place at the right time. Too much fizz on it for Noah James. And the Wolves are back in front. It's persistent for the Wolves. They didn't drop their heads after losing the two goal lead. They kept at it. And it's, a, it's a great finish from Takami. That's what happens when you keep your shots down. You might say there was a little bit of luck. So, not quite a goal after the 80th minute which as I said in the first half it's what we've seen in each of the last five meetings between those teams but it is another late goal now can the Wolves hang on Olympic well this late stage they're not in kitchen sink territory but they're reasonably close to it Parkhouse finding much as overlapping run and Jan Yedovic or the, the bounce didn't favor him and just had to stick out a hand and punch it away. And he's in swinger and that should be easy for Jan Yedovic. Of course. Uh, three subs and three window, sub windows used by Wolves so that's it. At least if I remember the rules correctly. It is a big if, by the way, but I do believe Wolves cannot make any more subs. So 
actually from mem memory. Well, actually, no. Okay. Olympic made subs at halftime, so they definitely still got a window left. And Adam Parkhouse, one of the men who came on at halftime, doing so much, did so much to swing the game, bringing Olympic from 2 0 down back to 2 2. Although, Wolves, of course, as we just saw from that strike by Andre Takami, back in front. Uh, Damon Gray's eyes lit up. He thought he had a chance to run out of the defense, but that'll be a free kick to Olympic. Much and the quick passes. Uh, not much space there. Lots of red jerseys in this part of the field. Michael Hatton, bouncing it off Pufflet. Now DePizio. Have a look at that. No, 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 not a Wolves play near the halfway line in this phase of play. So that's, that's the challenge presenting Olympic. But now, well, I was wondering how much ambition they have, but I think it's pretty smart. From McStay, no obvious passing option forward. He went back. And then Ryan has um, has sent it out of play. Damon Gray couldn't catch up to that one. Now Ryan's covering that, and he's left that. Good shout from the keeper. And perhaps and pour this coverage over just a reminder of what's uh, going on tomorrow in the NPL Women's New South Wales competition. So there's seven games being played on your Catholic Easter Sunday. Uh, the first two of those, 5 p.m. tomorrow in Sydney Olympics women's team. They're flying high after scoring six goals in a victory last weekend. Sydney Olympic facing Bulls FC Academy at Peter Moore Field, 5 p.m. tomorrow. Christos Mavamastakis will be on the call there. And also at 5 p.m. tomorrow, I'll be on the mic from Chroma Park. And it's the Queens of the Northern Beaches, Manly United, hosting at Blacktown Spartans. Then in the women's comp at the slightly odd time of 5.10 p.m. tomorrow from the Arctic Circle, Gladeswell Ravens hosting University of New South Wales. As Wolves are definitely in, shall we say, game management mode, trying to hold the ball near the corner flag. Then, as Ryan with the short throw this time. And it's Gray. Gray trying to win a corner hit. The substitute has done brilliantly. But women's games on Monday. 4.45 p.m. Football New South Wales Institute versus RPL Icott called by Dave McDonald. Then two games at 5 p.m. on Monday. And it's MacArthur Rams. And Rams head coach Stephen Peters going up against one of his former clubs, that being Northwest Sydney Spirit. That's 5 p.m. on Monday. The other 5 p.m. kickoff is Sydney University versus Illawarra Stingrays. And the latest of the women's games, 5.30 p.m. Monday. Northern Tigers versus Emerging Jets called by Annabelle Banfield. <coughs> stay and that's the 11th corner by my very manual and unofficial count and it goes away by Timothy now they did leave Antonis up for that set piece as there's the nice change of pace from Mustafa and the header well James here had to flip it over the bar it was dropping and if he tried to catch it he might have taken the ball over the goal line so no point in taking that risk uh, this is exactly where Wolves want it. As far away from their goal as possible. By the way, there are actually midweek women's games coming on on the Football New South Wales YouTube page. So Wednesday, 3rd of April at 8 p.m., Sutherland Strikers versus Interlines. That'll be called by Melissa Musket. Next day preparing for the yet another corner kick. And there's the header for Olympic. But now Ofuka. Nice in swinger in there. Well, James didn't get there. And maybe he put Damon Gray off who had found the space. Gray heads high and, high and wide. Now Olympic certainly got to get on with it. 
No, wait, there's actually a women's stream on Football New South Wales YouTube page on Thursday, the 4th of April as well. I just saw that when I was doing my pre-match prep. So at 8.05 p.m., I don't know why they don't just say it's 8 p.m., 8.05 p.m., Thursday, the 4th of April, Illawarra Stingrays versus Gladesville Ravens. So that's a catch-up game from a washout earlier in the season. Now, nice run from Mustafa. How much support does he have? Gray's on the edge of the box for the cutback. Now he finds Gray. Goal kick. Wolves are convinced that there was a touch. And as a train goes past, going eastbound this time. Oh, the visitor's not getting that decision. By the way, of course, I was talking about games tomorrow. So, of course, there are those two games in the NPL men's competition tomorrow as well, both at 3 p.m. It's uh, Blacktown City versus Sydney United, called by Alexander Molchanov, the Russian Simon Hill, and also Rockdale Illenden versus Northwest City Spirit, 3 p.m. tomorrow. That's called by Nikola Pozdor. Now, nice switch of play. A little bit of space for Bandiera. He crosses it in. Yanetovic can't hold it. Kanazumi bails him out. Now, well, both Bandier and Mustafa just waiting for it to drop. Mustafa wins the battle. Gray, he might get his head to this. No, in fact, it is Gordon. And now George Timotheu. <coughs> and of course, if you've, stuck if you've stuck around us thus for this long, might as well switch on over via the various options on the live tab on this Football New South Wales YouTube page, the three 7 p.m. NPL men's games. So it's pretty much seamless switch. You've got your choice for between Hills United versus Manly United, Western Sydney Wanderers versus St. George FC, and Marconi Stallions versus Central Coast Mariners. And the staff has React running beyond him now react gets the ball and mustafa's joined the attack damon gray's up there as well and now nice run from mustafa he's got gray in the middle he cuts inside and goes his own way and noah james able to reel that into the gloves yes, olympic yeah pretty much go for bro time if you're olympic but that was defended well and wolves i mean there was this earlier passage where they were basically all sitting in a block within 15 yards of their own of their own penalty area but yeah a bit more proactive that time which we do like seeing that's a handball against gray i guess stopping that yeah back from that last phase they really pressed oliver pufflet stopped the olympic attack before it had a chance to build momentum now we're going to see a late sub, so Ten Kuol, he's going to be the fifth and final substitute for Sydney Olympic. He's wearing number 18. Much. Much. Keeps it under pressure from two defenders. Pufflet gets the run from Antonis. Kanazumi clears over the sidelines. And in fact, yeah, this is going to be the substitute, so of course they're going to do this quickly. George Antonis is the one who makes way. Ten Kual. So, yep, this is, it's kitchen sink time for Sydney Olympic. And straight into the mixer and straight towards Kual it goes. Wolves free kick, I think that is, yep. Yes. He's clattered into the defender here while so challenging for the ball. Coming off number 29, George Antonis. He was So I don't know. So let's see. Kuol replacing Antonis. Antonis was in a, it's kind of playing as kind of an attacking midfielder, but I think, yeah, it's Olympic. Uh, they're going to be pretty direct now, one would suspect. And they go with the aim at Kuol's head again. Now, physical battle between O'Donovan and Buznal. Flags up from Emir Hussein Hasnani, assistant on the near side. And Buznal's going to go into the referee's notebook as we're 
as we are in the 90th minutes. Well, see, I should keep an eye on Mitchell Renton, the fourth official, to see how much time added on there is as well. But yeah, once again, O'Donovan using his strength and his experience there to win that free kick. Very dangerous position for Olympic. And also, he has been joined. Looks like he's been joined up with more of a strike partnership up now up top for Olympic, O'Donovan and Kuo, who does add quite a bit of height, as you can see. Everyone back for Wolves. Bandiera delivers. That's Kanazumi it was who headed towards the edge of the box. Parkhouse helps it back into the area. Kuo. Cross, I think they've got a touch off a Wolves player. Kuo again. Still Kuo. He gets, and he scored. Ten Kuo straight off the bench. And he's found the equalizer as we enter stoppage time. He kept his head. There was not a lot of space, but there was just enough for him to slam the ball home. And it's Sydney Olympic 3, Wollongong Wolves 3. <clears throat> well, there we go. So, there we go. well, I'm glad the grand announcer was paying attention to Mitchell Renton because I wasn't. There we go. So, yeah, we've had 70 seconds of time added on. Of course, the five minutes, that's a minimum. There could be more depending on what happens in the next four minutes or so. Now, long throw time. So, it's Will Much looking to go full Rory to lap here. Towards Kual again. Riak heads away, but it's a corner. <clears throat> Timotheus up from the back as well. Wolves have left two up for any potential counter attack. Bandiera thinks about it and crosses. And Yedovic up, doesn't claim it. So Wolves have to scramble a bit. It's headed out the side of the box. Now it's Mustafa playing it forward. And yeah, that's well. Uh, Wolves would take that. Fuka cleverly winning the free kick. That's going to be a little bit of a breather for them. Well, there we go. So that's the sixth consecutive men's first grade meeting between Sydney Olympic and Wollongong Wolves. Six times in a row that we've had a goal after the 80th minute now. Thanks to Tenka Walls, 91st minute equaliser. And also, unless there's more late drama, it's going to be the fifth consecutive draw in men's first grade between these two teams. As Dylan Ryan slow to get up in back play, but he actually does get up and he will get back on side. So Wolves aren't shorthanded for any real length of time. <clears throat> now, ooh, well, it's not, it's, well, we'll never know if Adam Park has timed his run well there. Let's look at all this space. And Wolves, well... That's going to break for Pufflet. And the structure beginning to disintegrate for both teams that, as the legs begin to tire. Parkhouse is one and one. Onto his left foot. He clips it in towards O'Donovan. And he scored. Roy O'Donovan has made it 4 3 to Sydney Olympic. Out of Parkhouse. Again, the creator off the bench. And Olympic's ace goal poacher, who hasn't had much of a sniff the whole game, looks to have won it for Sydney Olympic. Absolutely incredible. It's the Irishman's fourth goal of the season, and it looks like Olympic are going to be popping open the champagne bottles tonight thanks to the man from Cork, the skipper, Roy O'Donovan. Can't restart until 
Now the Wolves physios on the field. My apologies, not sure who it is that needs treatment. I think it might be Kanai Zumi. Just, I'm just basing that on basically who is standing up because that's the player I don't see standing up getting ready for the kickoff. Yeah, we're going to have, by the way, we're going to have well past the five minutes of time added on now. Oh my goodness. Is it? Actually, be great. That's my apologies. It's Dylan Ryan. No, I think that's my. Yeah, Kanazumi was the one checking on him. But yes. So, Wolves, of course, can't make a sub now. Although Dylan Ryan will be on the field at the as soon as he can. But Adrian Anders signaled to him, not yet. Now Mitchell Renton waves Dylan Ryan on. And now we're, well, for the younger folk here, they didn't used to tell us how much time was added on at the end of the games. So your guess is as good as mine. And Ryan straight into the attack, but he's been pinged for handball. I need to catch my breath. It's absolutely incredible. What we've seen here today at Belmore Sports Ground. The sun has set. We thought the sun had set on Olympics' chances of getting a point from this game. But it's those late, late goals from Tenkall and Roy O'Donovan. And that's what's put Olympic in the lead. And Darcy Madden heads it back to Jan Yedovic. We know where this is going. No time for subtlety, just kick it as far as he can. Now, well, speaking of kick it as far as you can, it's exactly what William Much did. Oh. Hands up from Dylan Ryan, of course he's a tall lad, might as well stay forward. And he'll get a flick on as well, but it goes to Noah James, and Noah James does what every keeper does when his team has a one goal lead in the dying stages. Catches the ball and slowly falls to the ground. Let's see. I'll try and keep one eye on Adrian Arndt as well, but we'll get, judging from the body language, at least 30. Oh no, actually we won't because there's the whistle. And there we go. The Easter weekend is the time to see people come back from the dead. And that's what Olympic have done this afternoon. They've defeated Wollongong Wolves by four goals to three. Wolves had a two goal lead at halftime thanks to a wonderful double from Takumi Afuka. I'll let him talk. The final score, So Wolves leading 2-0 at yes, half time because uh, And so Wolves were leading 2-0 at halftime because of the Takumi Ofuka double. Sydney Olympic brought it back to 2-0 with, sorry, brought it back to 2 all with goals from Michael Barkas and Darcy Burgess. Wolves thought Andre Takami had won it for them when he put them 3-2 up in the late stages, but it was a real stoppage time show. Tenku all equalized in the 91st minute and Roy O'Donovan won it in the 94th minute for Olympic. We hope you stick around on the Football News of Us YouTube page. Three games coming up at 7 p.m. Hills United versus Manly United, Western Sydney Wanderers versus St. George FC, and Marconi Stallions versus Central Coast Mariners. But for now, this is Eric Subihano signing off. Thanks for enjoying our coverage of the NPL Men's New South Wales competition. Wishing you plenty of good vibes, great coffee, sick tattoos, razzlers, 
and have a great Easter weekend. And if you're traveling, please travel safe. We'll see you next time.